on today's Locked On Bama in my DJ Khaled voice. Another one. Alabama gets another commitment, and uh, it's a big one. It's another flip from uh, this time from Ohio State. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about uh, the receiving recruiting situation in Alabama and uh, some of the situation going on with the current receivers. So, um, well, not necessarily the current receivers, but receivers in Alabama past. Uh, I- I'll explain it later. Y'all just hang with us. Locked on Bama's coming up. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked on Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? I'm I'm almost tired of dealing with daily commitments. Nick Saban is wearing me out. I mean, it's hard to believe he's 70. I'm exhausted. (laughs) Um, But uh, first of all, thank you for making us your first listen. We appreciate you guys so very much. Uh, We're creeping up on 1,700 subscribers, and that means a ton to us. Thank you so much for uh, sticking with us. Can't wait till the season gets started. And that will really happen in, what, about a day and a half. So looking forward to that. But, Jimmy, let's go ahead and talk about Ty Lockwood. This was a tight end committed to Ohio State. He's been committed to Ohio State for like a year. And um, now he just gets the the offer from Alabama, um, gives him something to think about, and uh, he has decided to flip. And and I think that's wonderful. It's a position of need for Alabama. There's no doubt about it. Yes. uh, Alabama had a difficult time finding a tight end. They looked all over the country. They looked all over the – the, the list of the best tight ends out there. They kicked the tires on several of them, including both tight ends committed to Ohio State. One thing to keep in mind, though, Ty Lockwood is a new name to most Alabama fans, but look where he's ranked. This is a significantly highly ranked guy nationally. And like Luke pointed out, he's been committed to Ohio State since last August. That doesn't mean Alabama hasn't been in contact with him. I think there was communication throughout I think there was a relationship throughout. It's just this kid was loyal. He was locked in to his first choice, and he was going to stay there. Uh, and then Ohio State opened the door when they took a second tight end. I mean, that's clearly, I mean, in terms of like, what happened? Well, Ohio State took a second tight end, and maybe this kid felt like, hey, it's best for me if I come in by myself. Most schools only take one per year. Maybe felt misled. I don't know that. Um, but he, 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 he's signing with a school that's taking one instead of signing with a school that had already taken two. So I, I think that's why the door opened. And just because this is a new name to you, it is not a new name to Alabama. And this is a pretty highly ranked kid. This is a kid that's going to help Alabama stay number one uh, in on three uh, team recruiting rankings. Um, this is a, a good kid. I just wrote a long piece on him on the board uh, at, at Bama Insider and uh, Andrew Bone and uh, Joseph Hastings put out a ton of work on this guy just now. Uh, you, you, you'll spend quite a bit of time reading all there is to read about Ty Lockwood if you're uh, if you're on Bama Insider. Shoot, <laughs> I'm muted every time. By the way, kudos to On Three for uh, reeling in uh, Andrew Bone, friend of the program, friend of mine, super dude. And uh, super at what he does, so you guys will certainly be the beneficiary of that. Um, but yeah, let me let me read something. This this is again goes back to what we were talking about yesterday. Hunter Osborne commits to Alabama, and um, he's a good kid, good family. Caleb Downs, good kid, good family. In fact, just about everybody so far. I don't know an exception. They seem like great kids, great really helps with team chemistry. This uh, to the family. Uh, of the Lockwoods, April Lockwood, who is Ty Lockwood's mom, tweeted this. This was a very, very hard and personal decision for our family. We love Buckeye Nation and the staff at Ohio State and wish them only the best. However, selfishly, looking forward to having my son closer to home, roll tide. You know, I think that's exactly how it should be done. I mean, look, people are going to flip nowadays. There's some folks who still get upset when you see a flip and the uh, I think Dick Vitale came out with like, I can't believe somebody's committed somewhere's going to visit somewhere else. Well, Dick, that's the way it is now. And um, it's just, it's that easy. And uh, sometimes somebody makes a decision 
and it's a little bit quick on the draw or the, the situation changes. Like uh, you, they start recruiting another tight end and you're like, hey, maybe I need to go somewhere else. Uh, that It needs me a little bit more that's closer to home. And so anyway, really like this pickup. Ty Lockwood, fantastic player and uh, very excited about his future. Let me go ahead and tell everybody about Bet Online. Bet Online is the place you want to go to get that bet in. I've been saying that for God knows how long. Bet Online is the fastest, easiest way to check in betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lots, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, and even sports and golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in-game betting scores and podcasts, they have you covered. Everything you need at BetOnline.net. Head to BetOnline.net today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening right now. BetOnline is where the game starts. All right, Jimmy. Um, I want to talk now about some other recruiting, uh, and, and this is guys who haven't committed yet, but um, wide receiver committing, recruiting. There's Jalen Hill who visited Alabama this past weekend, and apparently some people think that uh, Alabama has made a move, may have a good shot at him. He's a top 75 player in the country by most accounts. Uh, he's from the state of Texas, and a lot of people think he's leaning to Texas. At the same time, it certainly does feel like Alabama's made a move, right? Yeah, I would say like about uh, – uh, wait. Okay, I would say like about a month ago, uh, there's no way I would have predicted uh, Jalen Hale would end up at Alabama. I thought for sure he would go to Texas, uh, and, and he still may go to Texas. I'm just saying today the door is open. It does feel like he visited this past weekend. It was an unofficial visit, not an official. He raved. Go go find um, Bones' story on Jalen Hale's visit. He raves. I mean – I think too many fans look for inside scoop instead of just reading these interviews. So much of the answers are just right in front of you. Just read the interview. I mean, they, these kids don't talk in code. They answer the questions. And uh, it's clear Jalen Hale really likes Alabama. Alabama really likes this kid. And Alabama does want, per our information, a third wide receiver in this group to go along with Malik Benson, the nation's top Juco receiver, and Cole Adams, uh, who is a blue chipper, a four-star player, uh, Alabama would like a third wide receiver, Jalen Hale, and a kid from Gainesville, Florida, uh, Richardson, I think his name is. Why am, I, why am I brain farting? I never do that on recruits. But uh, there's a wide receiver from Gainesville, Florida, that was in this weekend that Alabama likes a lot, too. I think they sort of look at Hale, and that kid is sort of, you know, they're, they're both really good. You mean Jaron Hamilton? That's it. I said Richardson. I, I knew there was an un at the end. There was an O N at the end. I, I went. I went Richardson, but I just totally, totally brain farted on on him. But yeah, they, uh, Alabama likes him a lot. He likes Alabama a lot. Today, Luke, I'm not going to say Jalen Hale's flipping to Alabama, or going to Alabama, or Hamilton. But what I am going to say is, I think there's a really, really good chance Alabama ends up with one or the other. Jimmy, let me ask you this: Is there any? traction between Alabama and Carmelo English. I'm not saying I necessarily want there to be. I, there, there's part right. of me that's like, hey, I just want to keep bringing in dudes from the state. And um, he, he seems like a pretty good receiver. And he's committed to Auburn right now. Um, but he's from Central Phoenix City. And they have a pretty good track record of producing wide receivers. Uh, I like Carmelo. Uh, I, I think he's a legit SEC receiver prospect and one of the best kids Auburn's got, if not the best kid Auburn has. Uh, I know this wouldn't be popular with our Auburn fans that listen, because, and I, I wouldn't say this if I didn't believe it or had some information, but let's just put it this way. I think if Alabama was in a position uh, to where they wanted Carmelo English, I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, I, I, I think Alabama's focus is on other kids, but if their focus becomes on Carmelo English, I wouldn't rule. Uh, I wouldn't rule that out. Um, and keep in mind, people, this is another thing. Alabama recruits at such a high level. Just because Alabama hasn't pushed for him doesn't mean Alabama doesn't think he's good enough to play there. I mean, it, it's put it this way: if you're on the board at all. 
Alabama likes you. <laughs> now, you might be at the top of the board, which means they love you, or you might be near the bottom of the board, but that means they like you. If you're not on the board, you're not really being recruited. Uh, all of these kids that we discuss here are on the board at some point. Uh, and hey, uh, I, I will tell you this, I'm, I'm convinced of this. I've been following Alabama recruiting since the 80s. Uh, e every other Alabama staff, but this one would, would have taken English day one. I mean, he, he's a quality in-state SEC receiver and a good player. It's just Alabama recruits at such a level. I mean, look, Alabama's receivers win things like Heisman trophies. Yeah, good point. Speaking of receivers, when we come back from this break, we're going to talk about the 1,000-yard receivers in Alabama history. This is – there's some shocking numbers on here to me, but we're going to talk about that here in just a second. All right, Jimmy, so – AL.com came out with, let me see the title of the article here. Um, I don't know why. SEC football by the numbers, 1,000-yard receivers reach record, whatever the heck record they're talking about. I'm only concerned with Alabama. Alabama, how many, have you already seen this article, by the no, way? I don't want you to I guess. Have not, I have not. How many, how many how Alabama? How many do you think Alabama has all time? And you mean 1,000 yards in a season? Mm-hmm. Uh, Two things I'm going to know before I even start. The number is going to be shockingly low over his over the course of history, and basically all of it will be recent. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, it's been done on. I think it's been done by ten players. Is that right? Well, all right, ten players is fine, and that's I want to count it. But how many? How many? How many Different players have done it total? Oh, in the SEC or at Alabama? At Alabama. 10. Well, it's been done 13 times. Okay, I was close. I was now, close. The same player has done it a few times. Uh, Jerry, right. Judy. Um, DJ Hall. Uh, DJ Hall, Amari Cooper. Um, those are the three that have done it a few times. So, actually, you're kind of right if you sort of subtract no, then, it that way. But So, it's been done 13 times by like 10 guys. Right. Let me, okay. let me run through this, and, and then I'll get your take on it. Yep. Alabama's first 1,000-yard receiver ever was 1993 in David Palmer. He had exactly 1,000 yards, exactly, on 61 receptions, okay? Mm -hmm. Skip ahead to 2006. DJ. We didn't, that was the next time we had one, DJ Hall, with 1,056. And, of course, in 2007, he had 1,005. Then you've got Julio Jones in 10, Amari Cooper in 12 and, 13, and 14. You had Ridley in 15, Jerry Judy in 18, Devontae Smith in 19, Jerry Judy in 19, Devontae in 20, obviously with 1,856, which let me say this. If he hadn't hurt at the beginning of the second half of the Ohio State game, he might have gone for 2,000 yards received in the season. Man, um, he should have won the Heisman. During a COVID year. Yeah. Against an all SEC competition. Yeah. Um, Jameson Williams and John Mechie both did it last year. Um, I, that's just crazy to me that um, we've only had those few. But then I look at some of the others. Arkansas has only had four all time. Auburn, how many how many a thousand yard receivers do you think Auburn has had all time? I think I know this, and it's crazy. Is the answer zero? It's two. Again, I was close. <laughs> I mean, that's nuts. I mean, Georgia's only had one. Well, think about this. You play 12 games through most of college football's history. You only played nine or 10. Then there was a period of time you played 11. Everybody plays 12. So to have a thousand yard season, that's an, you have to average, what, 80 yards per week, right? To, to hit a thousand exactly. 80 yards receiving in a game is, you know, it's a significant game. It's a significant game every week for 12 games. But I'm with you. It just shows how the SEC uh, has never really been a high offense, high octane league. Uh, but it's sort of getting that way. Alabama sort of exemplifies it where David Palmer is the only one until 2006 and, and, and then add, you know, nine or ten more guys since then. Uh, but it, it is all amazing. And, and the fact that Alabama had – Devontae and Judy on the field at the same time. And then guys 
look at guys who aren't on the list like Waddle and uh, and Ruggs, who were first round picks and great players. Yeah, it is pretty amazing. And um, Traylon Burks, did he have a thousand last year? Right, Burks. Not according Arkansas. to this article, I don't think. Let me see. Actually, let me take that back. Because I said Arkansas had four, right? He may yeah. have had a thousand. Yeah, he did last year. He had a one eleven hundred. Um, that LSU's guy. Had, that guy Alabama killed us. now, Jimmy. Alabama now has the most. I'm, I'm looking here. Has the most of anybody in the SEC. And of the of the thirteen seasons, or of the thirteen times a re, Alabama receiver has gone over a thousand yards, eleven of them have come in the Saban regime. That's amazing. And and I would guess stupidly that it would be Florida and Steve Spurrier that it felt like at the time they had 3,000 yard receivers per year. That's what it felt like. And in retrospect, those guys probably had less production than the Alabama guys of today. Well, in fact, I'm going to go back to Florida. LSU's had nine, by the way, which is pretty, pretty nice. Um, but I'm going to Florida here and they've had 11 and the last one to do it, Jimmy. What what year do you think is the last time Florida had a thousand yard receiver? Two thousand and twelve. Two thousand two. That is shocking. Shocking. Just shocking. That is. But anyway, I just thought that was some cool stuff today. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking with us. We will be back tomorrow. Who knows? There may be another commitment. Um, we're going to talk about all that more on tomorrow's Locked On Bama. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tap.